wanted to do something big for this video. Since we are halfway through our year away from home experiment, bringing us into week 26. Big idea, could I turn the left into the right in one week? Oh my goodness, getting into Hong Kong was crazy this time. We arrived after midnight, which was not ideal. The terminal is huge, we needed to take the train. Then we hit the longest lineup on a Monday at 12.30 a.m. Probably something to do with the upcoming Chinese New Year holiday. Welcome to our adventure. We are a Canadian family of four exploring the world for a year. Keeping up with work, school, and building an online business while we move from place to place is an interesting challenge. For more information about our trip and creative inspiration in general, head over to dailycreatives.com. You can find links to my favorite three things, books, videos, and courses. Join us for two free downloads, the World Travel Tested Packing List and Chapter 1 from Fruitless at 40, Rediscovering My Creative Power, published in 2016. Look at this view. We are on the 33rd floor in one of the towers just nearby the Kowloon train station, also the station that does the quick service to the airport. You can actually drop your bags at the airline counters in the train station in the city and then make your way casually out to the airport. It's so civilized. I had this crazy idea. We're staying in my friend's apartment. Go to Ikea, buy a piece or two, and then get some Annie Sloan paint and make up something really nice for her apartment as a hostess gift. Criteria is the pieces have to be small and it had to be something I could paint rather quickly and easily. The other reason the pieces had to be small is I had to carry them on the train. So the IKEA hack victims were the Ospit tray and the Rodby armrest tray. So getting to Hong Kong Island from the Kowloon side involved the MTR. In fact, when our shopping was done and we were sitting having lunch at this amazing French restaurant on the Hong Kong side, I thought, you know, this is a pretty cool life. You don't need a car. You can come and go as you please. You have a transit system that takes you everywhere. And oh my gosh, the IKEA store was a hoot. Our IKEA stores at home are based on the kinds of humongous rooms that we have in our humongous houses. Here, it would be completely impractical to have those massive rooms, so they have dining rooms. And because the rooms here are so small, the showroom had to build the walls because all the vertical space was being used. I think it would be really cool to have a portion of the store set up in the Hong Kong style for all North Americans to see. Just, it's quite fine to live in a And I think that's state. what the tiny house movement is all about, is to just get back to reality. We don't need these massive spaces. The thing that I didn't realize, and so I didn't really think to prepare my family for, was the retail store for the Annie Sloan chalk paint, the licensed stockist here in Hong Kong, is actually set up not as a typical retail store where you just walk in from the street. And I, and I knew that you had to go up a floor, but what I didn't realize is that it is set up like a typical Hong Kong business inside of a high rise. I mean, the elevators to the buildings, there's a couple of different options because they don't stop on every floor. So this one will stop on every other floor, you know, odd numbers and this one will stop on the even. My family was like, what is going on here? Where are you taking us? We had to sort of get buzzed in to that point and then, you know, of course, go up the right elevator to get to the floor that we wanted to go to. Supply list. First up is the sanding pads, which I've never used before and the soft wax in the clear color, my fave. The two colors for this project, which are Provence and Greek blue, and the Annie Sloan brush, which is an amazing piece of equipment. The multi-tool and the paper towels. Multi-tool is something we had in our first aid kit and it came in really handy to open up the paints. And then I harvested a pair of chopsticks from my friend's kitchen to use as stir sticks. The Annie Sloan stockist in Hong Kong is called Thorn and Burrow. In this case, I didn't want to use the brush in both pots of paint, so I just splashed the paint on with the chopsticks. And then I 
kind of merged it together uh, with the brush, trying not to make it too even and turning it into one color, but keeping it as two distinct colors as possible. Then I played around with splashing on some of the opposite colors because I thought it was starting to look a little bit too uniform. And then kind of just really lightly, the brush was pretty dry at this point, sort of dabbing on that accent color. And you can see here, dabbing it on in splotches, just being as random as I could to try and give it this sort of accidental type of look. And then it, back with the darker color of blue, the Greek blue, and just being kind of whimsical in, in how you lay up the color. Same idea on this piece. It was a lot bigger, so I got to play around a little bit more with how to variegate the color as the piece flowed from one end to the next. Just being careful because these are slats with a fabric backing, so I didn't want a whole lot of color to get stuck in the middle of the slats. So the brush needed to be pretty dry in order to not have too much paint to deal with. Um, so I had to be conscious of that. And also I really wanted this to look quite a bit different from one end to the next and not be uniform in any way. I wanted it to look almost weathered and like it sat outside for some time. And finally coming back to the first smaller tray, turning it over onto the back side and making sure to put some amount of paint on the back side. It's nice if you turn it over to see that. There was a nasty amount of stickers on the back that were hard to get off, and so hopefully this covered it up. Then my favorite part, the wax. So I just applied it with the paper towel, um, being as generous as I had to be without getting too much on there. And also these paper towels tore really easily, so I had to be careful. And then buffing it and sanding it. So I have loved being back in Hong Kong. It has been the first time I've ever been here and not been super jet lagged because I was on a business trip. Because we've been in Southeast Asia for two and a half months now, it's been so nice to be touring around the city and just be experiencing it as if it was the first time for me. Because in a lot of ways, when you're not jet lagged, it's like you're seeing the place uh, from a whole different perspective. And it's been pretty fantastic and I've really enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and happy travels. Check out my YouTube channel, Creative Wandering, for all the highlights. Follow along for new videos posted every Sunday. See you over there.